Good morning, class. Welcome to the last episode of our discussion on the law on, cor on corporation. This morning, we're going to discuss the remaining topics, which will not uh, take us long. Okay, so, so from Title 10, uh, sorry, Title 11 to, to the end now, of the Corporation Code. After this one, we are going to discuss for the Revised Corporation Code Republic Act 11232. Okay, we start with the nationality of corporations. So class, as an offshoot of the fact that a corporation is an artificial being, the law accords the corporation its nationality. So kagaya natin, no, meron ding siyang nationality. Now, now, the nationality of the corporation serves as the legal basis for subjecting the business or its activities to the, to the laws, economic and fiscal powers, and various social and financing, financial policies of the state to which it is supposed to be belong. So by the nationality, nationality of the corporation, no, um, the corporation is being subject, subjected to domestic laws of the country by which it is formed, organized, and existing. There are serv several tests, as you know, in determining what is the nationality of the corporation. The place of incorporation test provides that a corporation you know, is, a, is, is to be considered a domestic corporation if, uh, if it is formed, organized, or existing under the laws of the Philippines. Now, the place of incorporation test is the principal test you know, that is being used in determining the nationality of a corporation. Now, okay, again, a corporation is a national of the country under whose laws it has been formed, organized, and is existing. Second is the control test. Now, under the control test, a corporation can be considered as a Filipino corporation or domestic corporation no? if the um, stock if the shares of stocks is owned by at least Filipino citizens or domestic or a domestic corporation. So again, the threshold amount is that the stock holdings must, must be at least 60% owned and controlled by such citizens. Okay. Now the control test is used you know, where the 60-40 Filipino alien equity ownership is not in doubt you apply the control test in case that there is no doubt with respect to the uh, distribution of the Filipino ownership and the alien equity ownership. Now, 60% is owned by the Filipinos and then 40% is owned by um, foreign citizens. Okay, under the control test, now the shareholdings in another corporation shall be considered to be Filipino nationality when computing the percentage of Filipino equity of the second corporation. Now, if you apply the control test, you have to determine what the shareholdings of a corporation or a shareholder corporation. Now, you have to determine now the percentage of Filipino equity of the second corporation. Now, control test is applied in the following exploitation of natural resources which under the constitution must be at least 60% owned by Filipinos. No, so all um, uh, expedition to exploit our natural resources must at least be 60% um, no, Filipino owned. No, this is pursuant to the policy of the state to allow the Filipinos to uh, make use of or take advantage of the resources in the country. Now, control test is also applied in public utilities. We have seen this in the case of what? The, the PLDT case, the Gamboa versus Tevez case, no? And also some other public utilities, for example, Meralco, or the Manila Water, or Manila. These are public utilities. Now, the public utilities under the Constitution must be owned and controlled by at least 60% of the Filipino citizens. Okay, now mass media. Now, control test is also applied in mass media. 
But in mass media, under the Constitution, this must be 100% Filipino-owned. For example, at uh, TV stations, no? these are subject to 100% um, requirement of um, ownership by Filipino citizens. Okay. The cable industry, no, as a form of, of mass media, no, is uh, also subject to 100% Filipino ownership. And control test is applied um, uh, in this indus these industries as well. Okay. Advertising agency or industry. Now, only Filipino citizens, corporations, or associations with at least 70% of whose capital is owned by such citizens is allowed to engage in advertising um, industry or business. Now, the third test or what we call... This is a more strict or a stricter test than the control test is the grandfather rule. Now, if under the control test, you have to determine if at least 60% no, um, of the stockholders or the shares of stocks is owned by the Filipinos, then under the control test, a particular corporation has already passed the, uh, um, has already or a certain corporation is also is already considered as a Filipino or a domestic corporation if at least 60% of the shares of stocks is owned and controlled by such citizens. On the other hand, grandfather rule is stricter in the sense that um, in this method, you have to determine the nationality of the corporation by what? Breaking down the equity structure of the shareholder corporation. So this is the, um, a, a certain corporation and you have to go to the stockholders, no? which is also a corporation or another corporation. Now you have to break down the equity structure of the investing corporation or the shareholder corporation in order to determine um, under the grandfather rule if uh, a particular corporation is, if, is to be considered as a Filipino corporation. Now, it is called grandfather rule because you have to determine the corporate layering. No grandfather, kasi merong three levels of determination. From the corporation up to its, what, the, uh, the father, which is what, the stockholders or the shareholder corporation. And then you have to determine the nationality of the grandfather, meaning to say the third level or the third layer of corporate structure, which is what, the shareholder of the shareholder corporation. That is what I mean by the grandfather rule. It involves the computation of Filipino ownership no, of a corporation in which another corporation of a partly Filipino and partly foreign equity owns capital stock. Okay. Okay. So under the grandfather rule, the percentage of shares held by the second corporation in the first is multiplied by the latter's own Filipino equity and the product of this percentage or percentages is determined by the ultimate Filipino ownership of the subsidiary corporation. So you have to determine the equity structure of the investing corporation or the shareholder corporation. So by multiplying what? The uh, percentage of shares held by the second corporation in the first multiplied by the latter's own Filipino equity. So you have to determine the Filipino equity or ownership in the shareholder corporation applying the grandfather rule. Okay, example, MV Corporation and AC Corporation have e equal interest in XYZ Corporation. MV Corporation is 60% Filipinos or owned by Filipinos, while AC Corporation is 50% owned by Filipinos. By the grandfather rule, MV Corporation would have at least 30% Filipino owned in XYZ interest. So you have their MV and AC, that they, they are both corporate stockholder in XYZ corporation. MV has 60% owned by Filipinos, while AC is 50% owned by Filipinos. Now, by the grandfather rule, MV corporation would have 
Filipino interest in XYZ, that is 60% of 50%, while AC Corporation would have a 25% Filipino interest in XYZ Corporation, which is taken from 50% of 50%. Hence, the total Filipino interest is only, what, 55%. Now, note that the application of the test is limited to the issues of investment. Only when the corporation is less than 60% owned by Filipinos shall the grandfather rule be applied. Now, you will take note class in our example flashed in your screens. Now, the XYC corporation um, did not pass 60% Filipino ownership because, again, you have to multiply what the... Uh, the percentage owned and the percentage the percentage owned by the shareholder corporation in the corporation and the percentage of Filipino ownership in that corporation. In which case, MB would have what? 30% Filipino interest and then you have 20% Filipino interest for AC corporation. So 30% plus 25 equals 55%, which is not compliant with the requirements of the law, which is why under the grandfather rule, XYZ Corporation will not be able to surpass the requirements imposed by the Constitution. Okay. Now, class, you apply the grandfather rule and take note of this only when the corporation is less than 60% owned by Filipinos. So if the stock holdings or the shares of stocks is at least 60% owned by Filipinos, you do not apply the grandfather rule. What you apply is the control test. Now, in case that less than 60% no, is owned by Filipinos in a particular corporation, that is the only time that you apply the grandfather rule, in which case you have to determine the Filipino ownership of the shareholder corporation in order to arrive whether or not the corporation is to be considered as a domestic corporation or a Filipino corporation um, uh, or a Filipino corporation. Okay, non-stock corporation. Let us go to non-stock corporation class. We have discussed this before, that a non-stock corporation is where no part of its income is distributable to its members, trustees, or officers, subject to the provisions on dissolution. So class, a non-stock corporation is where the income or the profit of the corporation is not to be distributed to its members, trustees, or the what? The board of or, uh, the officers no? of the non-stock corporation. Okay. A non-stock corporation. Provided that any profit which a non-stock corporation may obtain as an incident to its operations shall whenever necessary or proper be used for the furtherance of the purpose or purposes for which it was organized. So the profit of a non-stock corporation goes to the purpose of the non-stock corporation or in the furtherance for the purpose for, uh, by which the corporation was organized. Now, do not mistake the fact that a non-stock corporation does not earn profit. A non-stock corporation can earn profit, but the fact that it earns profit is only incidental to its operation. Now, a non-stock corporation also has the power to make profits and engage in business. Okay, Incidental profits obtained from operations, profit of obtained from investment of accumulated funds, etc., etc., powers necessary in furtherance of purpose. Now, the mere realization of profits out of the operations of a non-stock corporation does not automatically result in the loss of its exemption from income taxation as long as no part of its profit inures the benefit of any stockholder or individual. Now, class, you know, this concept means that whenever a non-stock corporation will derive profit from its operation, it does not lose its what exemption from income tax as long as no part of that particular profit will inure to the benefit of any stockholder, member, or individual. We have seen this in the cases of St. Luke's, no? um, wherein where uh, 
if uh, or, or sorry in the case of YMCA Manila no in the case of YMCA Manila no um the profits of the non-stock corporation was um or uh particular uh profit of the corporation was used in another um purpose other than it's uh the uh, intended purpose of the corporation, which is why class um, there was some tax assessment impo imposed in the past. Because the true tests were in the non-stock corporation may not be able to be assessed by income tax is the, 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 where the profits is to be distributed by the corporation. So in, as long as the corporation does not distribute the profits to its members or to the stockholders, Actually, to, to its members, no, or to its officers, no, then um, it does not lose its exemption from income tax. Si class may mga exempted from income tax, for example, um, religious, charitable, and educational institutions. No, under the Constitution, if I'm not mistaken, under Article Six, Section Twenty Four of the constitution no it is exempted from the imposition of real property tax as long as the property is uh, um, exclusively directly no used for the purpose for religious charitable and what educational uh, purposes no they ex they enjoy tax exemption no by express provision of the constitution but then again class um, this corporation must fulfill the requirements of the law, meaning to say they, uh, the properties must be um, uh, directly and exclusively used for its purpose. For example, in the case of YMCA class, anong nangyari dyan? Pinaupahan nila yung iba nilang properties, no? yung iba nilang amenities. As a matter of fact, class, when I was still in law school, I was able to play in the badminton court of YMCA, which is located in the second floor. They have their um, swimming pool, the ground floor. The second floor, they have a basketball court and a badminton court. Now, these are business enterprises entered into by YMCA Manila. Now, because the property is not or has not been exclusively used in the furtherance of the purpose of YMCA, then there was an imposition of income tax no, because of the non-exclusivity of the use of the property. Another example class of a non-stock corporation is my own alma mater, University of Santo Tomas or USD. Now, in USD, we have a uh, car park where um, the car park class, you will be surprised, is hosting the uh, AMV College of Accountancy. Na andun sila, I think sa fourth floor sila, yung mga classroom. Sa baba nun, car park, tapos sa ground floor, mga restaurant, Starbucks, etc. Pancake house, ayan naman nasa baba. So, this property of the, U actually, UST is exempt from payment of real property tax because it is an educational institution. Meron din siyang chapel sa loob. So, Exempt yan sa amilyar class, hindi nagbabayad ng real property tax. However, class, nagkaroon ng um, tax assessment from the BIR. Why? Because of the use of the car park. No, yung car park naging commercial na siya, hindi na siya educational purpose, or hindi na siya religious purpose, or hindi na siya charitable purpose. Which is why, in so far as that particular parcel of land inside USD is concerned, uh, they are liable to pay income tax and real property tax. Okay. So it is not the earning of incidental profits that make the, the entity non-stock, but the actual or legal authority to distribute such profits to the officers or members. So a limousinary purposes of a non-stock corporation, just read on your screens. Now, these are the purposes by which a non-stock corporation can be organized. Charitable, religious, educational, etc., etc. Okay? 
rules for distribution of assets upon dissolution. Okay, class. Tandaan nyo, ang important aspect sa non-stock corporation class is upon dissolution. No? Kasi class, ang mga non-stock corporation, no, non-stock corporation, for example, a church or a school, marami nagdo-donate dyan. Marami nagbibigay ng properties dyan. Marami nagdo-donate ng, nagbibigay ng lupa. Kasi noon, class, noong panahon ng mga Espanyol sa Pilipinas, pinaniwala nila ang mga Pilipino na kapag nag-donate ka, nagbigay ka ng property sa simbahan, yung kaluluwa mo pupunta sa langit. <laughs> Yan ang, that's, that is the old uh, teaching of the Catholic Church no? during the Spanish time in the Philippines. Now, marami mga Pilipino ang nag-donate ng properties nila sa simbahan. In fact, uh, kaya naging... Kaya nagkaroon ng malaking lupa ang mga Dominican friars at that time because of the mass donations coming from wealthy Filipino families. So, yan ang ano. Now, class, konting trivia lang. Alam niyo ba yung Espanya Boulevard sa UST, yung tapat ng UST, it was donated. No, it was donated uh, by a wealthy family. No? Pero meron silang kondisyon. Kailangan ang ipangalan sa kalasadang ito, Espanya. No, in honor of the King of Spain. Kaya yung UST class, ang address niyan, Espanya, Manila. Hindi pwedeng paltan yung pangalan ng street na yun, yung Espanya, hindi pwedeng palitan. Kasi dinonate yun class. Dinonate yun sa munisipyo, sa City Government of Manila. Meron, ang pagkakaalam ko, I'm not sure if it's the act, I have not seen the contact of donation. But what I know is, ang kondisyones lamang ng pagdo-donate ng Espanya, Manila is that hindi nyo pwedeng paltan ang pangalan ng street na to kailangan Espanya. No, in, honor of the, uh, in honor of the King of Spain. Okay? Anyway. Now, class, these donations, no? Uh, minsan, pag nag-donate ang isang pamilya, gusto nila ipangalan sa pamilya nila yung building na yon o yung lupa na yun. no So, pag nag-donate ang isang family sa isang non-stock corporation o sa simbahan o sa eskwelahan, no, public school ba yan o whatever, or a Catholic school, pag nag-donate ka dyan, pwede mong ilagay sa deed of donation yung mga kondisyones. Pag nag-donate ka sa simbahan, pag nag-donate ka, pwede mo ilagay doon, kailangan itong lupa na ito ay gagamitin bilang lupa ng simbahan. Hindi pwedeng ibenta. Pag binenta ito, no, babalik ang ownership doon sa donor. So yun ang tinatawag nating conditions requiring return, transfer, or conveyance. Kasi minsan, class, dinodonate ang property for a particular purpose. Wow, masyado kang mayaman, no? Or ano, iniisip mo na accomplished ka na, hindi mo na kailangan tong property na to, dunit mo sa simbahan, sa eskwelahan, pwede kang maglagay ng kondisyones. Na kailangan, itong lupa na to gagamitin lang sa ganitong purpose. Ngayon, halimbawa, pinatayuan ng simbahan o pinatayuan ng eskwelahan ng performing arts theater. O kaya, ginawa niyang market, mga tindahan, mga kantin. Tapos hindi iyon ang kondisyones ng donor o, o ng nagbigay ng property, pwede itong bawiin upon dissolution. No? So assets held by the corporation upon a condition requiring return, transfer, conveyance, and which condition occurs by reason of dissolution. Pag merong nakalagay na kondisyones doon sa donation ng property at hindi nasunod yung kondisyones na hiling nang nagbigay, pwede itong bumalik doon sa may-ari or sa dating may-ari. No, the ownership can revert back to the donor in case of non-fulfillment or what failure to fulfill the conditions imposed by the donor. Okay. Now, what about those assets which have not been imposed a condition but is subject to limitations permitting their use only for charitable, religious, etc. purposes. No? Pero walang kondisyones na pag hindi nasunod, babalik sa owner. Ano mangyari dyan, class? 
i-distribute yan to corporations which are engaged in activities with uh, which uh, which are engaged in activities which are substantially similar to the purpose by which the property is donated so class you have to determine if there is a condition for the return of the property. If there is a condition for the return of the property upon dissolution, you have to distribute the assets accordingly. Babalik mo yan sa donor. Or kung patay na yung donor, sa estate ng donor, or sa heirs ng donor. Okay? Now, if there is no condition, or if the property has been donated without a condition requiring return, then you have to distribute the property of the non-stock corporation to corporations engaged in activities in the Philippines with substantially similar purpose. Take note and take note. Okay. Okay. Close corporation class. Memorize. The requirements of a closed corporation. Ha? Tandaan nyo yan. The numbers of stockholders must not exceed 20. There must be a restriction on the transfer of issued stocks, which, which should not be more onerous than giving the right of first refusal in favor of the stockholder of the corporation and that the stocks may not be listed in the stock exchange, nor should they be publicly offered. Okay? So those are the requisites of what? A closed corporation. Memorize these requisites. Okay? Now, special rule on stock ownership. Although these three requisites are present, no? If at least two thirds of the voting stocks, excuse me, or the voting rights is owned and control or controlled by another corporation which is not a closed corporation, then it will not be considered as a closed corporation. I will repeat, even if these three requisites will up are present or applies, no, if what? at least two-thirds of the voting rights or the voting stocks is owned or controlled by another corporation which is not a closed corporation, then you cannot consider that corporation as a closed corporation. Okay? In a closed corporation class, what is peculiar is the manner by which the affairs of the corporation is managed. If it is a closed corporation class, Wala nang board of directors usually kasi wala pa silang bente. No? Wala nang board of directors. The stockholders themselves can directly manage the corporation no? and perform the functions of directors without need of election. No? When they manage, stockholders are liable as directors. There is no need to call a meeting to elect the directors and the stockholders themselves are liable for tort. Okay. Business prohibited from incorporating as a closed corporation. Class, familiarize yourselves in these businesses. These businesses may not register as a closed corporation. Take note, class, mining, oil company, stock exchange, banks, insurance companies, public utilities, educational institutions, other corporations declared to be vested with public interest. No? They are not allowed or they are prohibited by law from registering as a closed corporation. No? So in order to, to determine class, if the restrictions on the transfer of share is valid, you have to what? To check the articles of incorporation the bylaws and the stock certificate the restrictions on the transfer of shares must all appear in these three documents otherwise it, the restriction will not be binding on any purchaser in good faith okay okay alam niya na yan okay issuance 
of or transfer of stock in breach of qualifying conditions if the stock is issued to any person not entitled certificate of etc cetera, etc cetera. okay i leave this to you these are self explanatory concepts okay preemptive right put a star a five star class In this concept, the empty right is a very important concept now in the corporation code. Now, class, you will remember a preemptive right is the right of a stockholder to subscribe to the unissued shares of the corporation. Now, again, a preemptive right is the right of the stockholder to subscribe to the unissued share of a corporation. Now, class, preemptive right is different in a closed corporation. Now, the treatment of preemptive right is different in a closed corporation. It extends to all stock to be issued, class, including reissuance of treasury shares, whether for money, property, or personal services, or in payment of corporate debts, unless the AOI provides otherwise. Class, okay. Now, in a, in a closed corporation, the exercise of the preemptive right applies to all stock to be issued, you know, including the reissuance of a treasury shares, unless the AOI provides otherwise. Okay? Now, deadlocks. Now, this happens when the business and affairs of the corporation can no longer be conducted to the advantage of the stockholders in general. In case that deadlock, deadlock exists, any stockholder can file a petition to the SEC to take necessary steps to break the deadlock. No? The SEC can order the amendment of the articles of incorporation or the bylaws or to appoint a third party as a provisional director who is an impartial person. No? A provisional director is not a stockholder nor a creditor of the corporation. He must be independent no, of, of the existing stockholders. He must not be a receiver and does not have the title and power of a custodian or receiver of the corporation. But a provisional director have all the rights and powers of a duly elected director until such time that he is removed by the SEC or by all of the stockholders. He is also entitled to compensation. Now, class, let us go to voluntary dissolution where no creditors are affected. Okay, class. Sa dissolution, class, tandaan nyo lang dyan, kapag may creditors affected, oh no, sorry, when no creditors are affected, you only file an administrative application for dissolution with the SEC. Take note of the voting requirements, majority vote of the board of directors, and at least two-thirds by the stockholders. Okay? Okay, the copy of the resolution certified by majority of directors and countersigned by and filed with the SEC. The SEC must issue a certificate of dissolution because you remember, class, that the only way by which a corporation can be dissolved is with the consent or approval of the state, which is why the law requires that a corporation must obtain a certificate of dissolution from the SEC. Where creditors are affected, you, you don't file administrative application, but you file a formal petition for dissolution with the SEC with due notice and hearing to the duly, to be, uh, to the duly, um, to, to be duly conducted, okay? Now, you have to furnish copies to the creditors of the corporation. It must be signed by majority of the board, etc., etc., verified by the vice president or secretary or one director or trustee. So, these are the requirements. Take note and take note. Okay. The order must be published once a week for three consecutive weeks. Now, after five uh, days notice or five day notice from expired date, the SEC will commence to hear the petition. 
and objection if there is any. Now, if lawful, it shall order the corporation dissolve, provided for the disposition of the properties, and may appoint a receiver. Okay? You can also dissolve a corporation by shortening its corporate term. Now, through the amendment of the Articles of Incorporation by a vote of two-thirds of the outstanding shares. Okay. The notice of dissolution must also be published uh, for three consecutive weeks. You have to list down the corporate creditors with, with their consent to the shortening of the corporate term. Submission by majority stockholders uh, undertaking to personally answer for any outstanding corporate obligations of the corporation. You have to submit the latest audited FS, which must not be earlier than the date of the stockholders' meeting, approving the amendment to the Articles of Incorporation and a tax clearance from the BIR. Okay? Involuntary dissolution. A corporation may be dissolved by the SEC upon the filing of a verified complaint after pro proper notice and hearing on the grounds provided by existing laws, rules, and regulation. Okay, by expiration of the corporate term dissolution of the SEC on the grounds under existing law, you fail to organize or commence business within two years from incorporation or you are continuously inoperative for five years. You fail to file the bylaws within 30 days from the date of issuance of the certificate of incorporation. Class, these are the grounds you know, by, by which the SEC can uh, involuntarily dissolve the corporation. Okay? Fraud in pro procuring the certificate of registration, continuance of business not visible as found by management committee or the rehabilitation receiver, serious misrepresentations, and failure to file required reports. Okay. Okay, take note. Uh, we will discuss this in detail. So, appointment of management receiver, rehabilitation receiver, etc. We will discuss them in details later, but not under corporation code. Okay, a foreign corporation class is the one form exists and uh, one form organized and existing under Philippine laws. Okay. A corporation has legal status only within the state or territory in which it was organized. For this reason, a corporation organized in another country has no personality to file suits in the Philippines. No? In order to subject a foreign corporation doing business in the country to the jurisdiction of our courts, it must acquire a license from the SEC and appoint an agent for service of process. So take note of these three class. Tandaan nyo, if a, uh, a foreign corporation cannot file a case in the Philippines, kasi hindi siya nag-exist dito. No, wala din siyang business in the Philippines. So if a foreign corporation is doing business in the Philippines with a license, it can file and it, it, it can file a case and a case can be filed against it. Now, uh, if a foreign corporation is doing business in the Philippines without a license from the SEC, then it cannot file a case in the Philippine court, but it can be sued or a case can be filed against it in the Philippines. Now, if a foreign corporation is not doing business in the Philippines no, or um, is doing a business on an isolated transaction, it can sue it and it may also be sued. So the doctrine of doing business under Section 3D of the Foreign Investment Act of 1991. So this is, these are the enumeration of what is meant or what is the definition of a foreign corporation doing business in the Philippines. If you solicit orders, if you enter into a service contracts, if you have open offices, whether code liaison offices or branch offices, the appointment of representatives or distributors domiciled in the Philippines or who in any calendar year stay in the country for a period totaling 180 days or more 
no, you will be considered as doing business in the Philippines under the Foreign Investment Act of 1991. Okay? Participating in the management, supervision, or control of any domestic business is also considered as doing business. And any other acts that imply continuity of commercial dealings or arrangements, no? etc. So these are the matters which are not considered by the Foreign Investment Act of 1991 as doing business in the Philippines. Mere investment no, as a shareholder by a foreign equity is not doing business. Having a nominee director or officer. Kasi class, no, if you have um, ownership of shares, then you can what? You can nominate a director to represent its interest in such corporation. And it will not amount to doing business in the Philippines. Appointing a representative or distributor domiciled in the Philippines which transacts business in its own name and for its own account. So the true test is that what there must be continuity of commercial dealings and arrangement and that the act of or works exercise is for the purpose of the organization of the foreign corporation. Okay? Contract test. Okay? As long as the contract is perfected and that the services is consummated outside the Philippines, then it will not constitute doing business in the Philippines even if the products themselves should be manufactured or processed in the Philippines by locals. Okay. This ends our discussion on the Corporation Code of the Philippines. No? So after this one, we will discuss the Revised Corporation Code of the Philippines. Okay. Thank you and have a nice day.